Welcome back to the show. My name is Evan, along with Michael J. Babcock. What's up, guys? Renee Montgomery. Hello there. It's an interesting day for you, Renee. It's the one-year anniversary of the day that you uh, publicly announced that you're going to opt out of the WNBA season. You were a member of a player uh, for the Atlanta Dream at the time. Of course, now you are a co-owner of the Atlanta Dream, which is unbelievable. And I'm so proud of you. We talk about this all the time. It's an incredible accomplishment. But I want to talk about what is what has happened in your life over the past year since you made that decision to opt out to focus on social justice issues and other things uh, related to that? Um, before we get to your comments, I want to show you the video of the interview that you did with us when you made that decision to opt out. So here's Renee a year ago talking about opting out. And then we're going to come back and get Renee's thoughts on, on what's transpired over the last year. So here's Renee. And I thought long and hard. So I'm the type of person that I'm either all in or I'm not. And I was thinking the WNBA season, there's going to be three games a week, which then there will be practice in between that film. You know, I'm one of the players that study a lot. Like I take it like I'm very overprepared. And so I just know that if my heart is somewhere else, then I don't need to be doing something different. And I just talked to my parents. I prayed on it. And then I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm just going to do it. And I'm not breaking up with basketball. It's just I'm just pausing things because right now we can all see something's happening. Like something's happening in America, something's happening all over. So I want to be a part of that something. All right, Renee. So crazy. tell me, what's what's the last year been like for you? It's crazy because one of the first things that happened is I started working here at TMZ Sports with you guys. And I feel like that, like that started and then everything just like took off from there. You know, I started to talk and and what's crazy is I started to talk to a lot of businesses. I thought it was crazy, but a lot of people wanted to make sure that they were diverse. It was like a hot topic. And then it was just talking to universities and then it turned into jobs. And I started working when sports came back, the jobs came back. So I started working. I covered the women's NCAA tournament. I covered the Hawks, the in-studio analyst for the Hawks. I started my own podcast during the pandemic and, and you know, it just everything and, and not to mention the things of the goals that were not necessarily business driven in the sense of an election happened, you know, a presidential election happened, Georgia, a lot, a lot of different things happened in Georgia. But one of the biggest things was the community came together. So, you know, just looking back, it's crazy. It's been the wildest year of my life, for sure. When you talk about the business aspect of it, Renee, you know, I, I think almost you're, you're like minimizing how important these jobs that you've, you've, you've gotten are, because what you're doing is you, you, you are, uh, it's representation in the owner's box, not just in the WNBA as a black woman, but also the fan control football league. You're a partner yeah. with Marshawn Lynch there. That's super yeah, important. That's um, you've developed a, a even better relate. I know you had a relationship with LeBron James, but like you've developed an even stronger relationship with LeBron James, who is, no doubt one of the most influential people on the planet right now. I mean, what you've done is, is you are an inspiration. You have opened doors. You have shown uh, younger people what's possible. I mean, you are, you are incredible, and we're proud to have you on the show. Obviously, we're super glad that you decided to opt out because we get to spend time <laughs> with you here. Um, yeah, hang right. with you guys. Yeah, I, I got to ask, though, is there ever a moment that you think, uh, and I know you're in the owner's box now, so things have changed, but do you ever think, oh, man, I, 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 part of me wishes I would have played – Maybe just one more season. I still have those athletes, those competitive juices flowing. I, I, oh, I, any, any of that? There's none of that. I have my dad on remotely podcast for Father's Day. He has that for sure. He talked about. <laughs> he was like, I wanted a couple more years, but I'm so proud of you. But for me, I feel like I did everything I could do, being an All Star, winning a couple of championships, six women of the year. But I am starting Renee's runs here in Atlanta. For hoopers that maybe want to continue the hoop dreams and get Love your it. stats logs, the bragging rights. So that is happening down here in the A. So I guess maybe I might shoot a couple threes there every now and then. <laughs> That's awesome. Also in your career, I mean, you did one of the most incredible things that anyone in any level has ever done. You guys won when you're part of the Minnesota Lynx. You won the uh, WNBA championship. And then you went to a private party with Prince, which I <laughs> yeah. still think about all the time. Every time I hear his music, I'm That's like, so Renee crazy. had a private performance with Prince where you got to see him rock out. <laughs> I mean, again, tell the people what that was like. Oh, that was nutty. Now, that was crazy. <laughs> I was, I didn't just 
we didn't just go as a team. It was only us there. And they brought us on stage. Well, not everyone, but I got on stage. There was about three of us. And when I tell you, I still played in the game earlier. My legs hated me the next day because I then danced all night on stage <laughs> alongside Prince. And as we know, he ended up passing away the following year. So those memories, I still don't believe it sometimes. Like if there weren't newspaper articles, I don't know if I would believe it. Yeah, Renee, you've accomplished so much. I mean, you're so young and you've accomplished so much. You should be so proud of yourself. And again, we're so proud to have you a part of this. And thank you for thank you for being here, man. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.